The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, made up of the world's leading climate scientists, has now published all three sections of its landmark comprehensive review of climate science. The world science community says we need to halve emissions by 2030 to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. If warming rises above 1.5 degrees, the IPCC says part of the world would become uninhabitable. Addressing climate change is a big challenge and it's been politically heated in Australia for over a decade. We don't have time to waste anymore. So what is the IPCC report? The IPCC is the peak climate science body of the United Nations. The first report covered the physical basis of climate science. The second dealt with the impacts of the climate crisis. And the third set out the ways in which the world can reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Among the key factors driving the rise of human-caused emissions are some serious changes in the way we're using, adapting and destroying our forests. All climate action means to involve protecting and restoring those rainforests. We've cleared rainforests across the world to use that land for agriculture or growing food for cattle, and that accounts for about 22% of all carbon dioxide emissions. If we curb deforestation and restore our forests, between 9 and 11 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide a year could be eliminated. This is happening right here, right now, on our doorstep in northern Queensland. This is the only part of the world where two World Heritage Sites meet, the Daintree Rainforest and the Great Barrier Reef. It's an amazing part of the country. I'm looking for people with interesting solutions to what the report says are some extremely critical issues. Can I get a return ticket? The Daintree Rainforest is 1,200 square kilometres in size. That's the same size as the entire city of Sydney. It's 180 million years old, 40 million years older than the Amazon rainforest. Interestingly, there are more tree species in one hectare of the Daintree rainforest than there is in the entire United Kingdom. Because of its age and location, this land is incredibly fertile. A local told me you could stick a chopstick in the ground and something would grow. In the 1950s, the Queensland government carved up sections of the surrounding rainforest and cleared the lots to make space for sugarcane and herding cattle. But there's an interesting plan to buy back some of these lots and reintegrate them with the surrounding Daintree rainforest. You know, it's been flogged with cane farming. It was really heavily ploughed, worked over, fertilisers added, so the ground's really not the best for planting. Nestled just off from the main road lies an old sugarcane farm. Since 1999, the Rainforest Rescue Team have been purchasing properties or working with landholders to convert the damaged land back into fertile forest. This transforms it into a lush, connecting nature corridor for native plants and animals to move back in. And why is it so important for us to be keeping these rainforests alive? Oh, geez. I mean, not only is it some of the most important homes for the greatest biodiversity of life on Earth, the cleaning of our airways, the cooling of our climate as well. Justin is a land manager at Rainforest Rescue and explained to me that the work that's carried out is carefully planned and monitored by ecologists and land experts, as well as members of the local Indigenous communities for which land rights of the Daintree were recently restored to. Same as some of the uh, uh, local Indigenous families will come and help too and talk about some of the trees that they uh, used to see around the area. We're just continuing that corridor so the life can keep moving down into the low country once again. To start seeing cassowaries cross the road again, yeah. that'll just be the bee's that, knees. That's, <laughs> that's a sign of success. That's the sign of success. This is from our tree plant day in 2021. And um, this is almost a year old now. The site is truly impressive. And Justin's right, everything grows at an alarming rate up here. The tree saplings were only planted in 2016 at a mass volunteer planting event, and today, many of the trees are towering over the once decrepit site. To get a good idea on how tall some of the trees can be by three years' time, it's just next door. The amount of life now that comes into here is phenomenal. A lot of rainforest animals, they don't like open space. They want corridors to fly through for safety. They want to feel confident they can dart through all the trees and uh, look for a feed nice and easily. Yeah. But before the annual planting events take place, the tree saplings have to be grown from seed at a nursery in the heart of the Daintree. 
Marine and a team of volunteers collect seeds from the ground of the rainforest and cultivate them in a greenhouse at a rate of 12,000 trees a year. Since 1999, Rainforest Rescue have converted 39 properties. In 2021, after 11 years of restoration work, a large 28 hectare property, that's 28 football fields, was officially granted nature refuge status by the Queensland government, meaning it is now protected from development forever. The lot was renamed Karanji Bubu, which is the local Yalanji language for cassowary land. Tell me about the significance of the area to Indigenous um. people. Some of the local clans that moved through the area used to camp over here. It was a bit of a stopover camp. Some of the elders around here were children walking around in this rainforest. You've got to ask, what is the tree that you remember as a kid? We're encouraging the bloodwoods to come back. you just got to ask the question. Their knowledge is still there. That's part of healing. It's not just about the ecology, it's the people. Finding that balance between us and the environment once again, that's the most important part. Yeah. If we strip back the entire report, there's really one key message that stands out, and that is that the time to act on climate change is now. Environment groups like the Australian Conservation Foundation say there's urgent need for stronger nature laws to protect the places we love and stronger climate targets this decade. And then there's people like Justin and his team at Rainforest Rescue who are making a real difference on the ground. There seems to be a gap between what communities say we need and what governments are doing. This is coal. And I feel like we kind of exist within that gap. We have the ability to move the barometer in either direction. We can tell governments that what people like Justin and his team are doing is really important and necessary. And we can throw our support behind these grassroots organisations. As I sit here at Cape Tribulation Beach, the only place on the planet where two World Heritage Sites meet, I can't help but think that we need to look at this report as the final call to action, the final whistle that tells us that the time to act on climate is now.